Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Thursday means it's Fishbowl Thursday here at Instant Deck Tech Land, and we have a wild deck to look at today. This deck is built around a card that I've never even kind of slightly considered playable, and that card is Lens of Clarity. We are playing a Lens of Clarity deck, and I can't believe that's actually a thing. This deck is sort of like Lantern Control, but for Pioneer, and it comes to us from Sanitarium. So thank you to Sanitarium for sending in a really sweet deck, and a quick reminder before we break down Lens of Clarity for Pioneer. If you would like your own deck considered for a future Fishbowl Thursday, Leave a link in the comments, or you can email it to me, sephardoliveftggoldfish.com. So let's talk about this ridiculous Lens of Clarity deck for Pioneer, starting with Lens of Clarity itself. So Lens of Clarity, it's a one-mana artifact that allows us to look at phase-down creatures we don't control. That's not really relevant, but if our opponent plays a morph, we got them. More importantly, it allows us to look at the top card of our library. So this deck... It is similar to Lantern Control in the modern format, except because our Lantern is Lens of Clarity, and we only get to see the top of our deck, we're mostly using our Mill Rocks to mill ourselves and try to control what we're drawing. So we have a lot of typical Lantern Control stuff. Kodak Shredder, Pixels of Pandemonium, Wand of Vertebrae. These are all cards that allow us to, for free, once around the battlefield, change the top card of our library, either by milling or Pixis actually exiles. We also have Treasure Map, which does something similar. We can and scry away for one mana and eventually flip to start drawing cards. So once we get down our Lens of Clarity and can see the top card of our library, we play a bunch of these cheap one mana artifacts and two mana artifacts in Treasure Map's case and basically control what we draw and try to find exactly what we need for any given situation. Uh, bonus, we're kind of like milling our opponent potentially in some cases or exiling their cards at least with Pixies of Pandemonium. So what are we actually trying to do by controlling our draw step? Well, first, we can find our interactive spells. We have Teferi Time Raveler, just a two of, but it can bounce stuff, it slows our opponent down, and then Aether Spouts is kind of our wrath. Uh, we can dig into it if our opponent has a big board of creatures, and basically get rid of all of the attacking creatures by putting them on the top or bottom of their owner's library. So we find our interactive stuff. We can also find Drawn from Dreams, which is our big card advantage spell, which really is almost more like a tutor in some sense, where we are able to grab two cards from our top seven, uh, similar to a dig through time, but we never get the discount on it. So this allows us to find our most important pieces. So how do we actually win the game with this deck? Well, our biggest, baddest, most important piece is Flood of Tears. So Flood of Tears bounces all non-land permanents, and then if we had four or more non-token permanents bounced, we had to put something into play for free. Because we have all those random pixels of pandemoniums and those cheap rocks, we are able to almost always have four non-tokens on the battlefield, which means when we cast Flood of Tears, after digging into it by controlling the top of our deck with less of Clarity, we're hoping to put Omniscience into play. Once we put Omniscience into play, then we should be able to win the game. So Omniscience just lets us cast everything for free, which allows us to replay everything that we bounced. For one thing, which is nice, it also allows us to use Fey of Wishes to get some way to win the game out of our sideboard. We don't really have a super solid way to win the game in our main deck, but Fey of Wishes can tutor any non-creature from our sideboard. And remember, once we have a Omniscience, we can do this for free and then cast what we tutor for for free. So as far as tutoring from our sideboard, we can grab stuff like Mystic Sanctuary, Flood of Tears, which kind of just lets us run it back. We can play a Flood of Tears again, bounce everything again, including the Fey of Wishes, which we can cast as a creature that we can Fey of Wishes again after putting Omniscience back into play, tutor up something else. Mystic Sanctuary can get back a Flood of Tears from our graveyard, then we draw into it, and then we proceed to cast it again, bounce everything, repeat the process. But really, as far as winning the game, we got a few different options. Paradox Edge untaps all non-land permanents whenever we cast a spell, then untaps all of our mill stuff, so we can get a Paradox Engine, and then get something like Jace Wielder of Mysteries 
to win by drawing an empty library, mill ourselves out, take up Jace, win. Also, enter the infinite Jace is just a straight up win. Enter the infinite draws our entire deck minus one card. And then if we get Jace as well, we can play the Jace, take up the Jace, win by drawing an empty library. So that's the most straightforward win with the deck. We also have some value planeswalkers we can stay. Jace memory adept, we can mill our opponent out if we want to. If for some reason we can't win by milling ourselves out, we can turn our mill stuff on our opponent. Jace mills for 10, also draws us cards. Ugin kills basically anything. We can also just make a ton of mana with Storm the Vault. It'll flip around because we have all those cheap mill artifacts. So it'll flip around, then we basically have just unlimited mana. So then we can cast everything, Fate of Wishes a bunch of times, keep picking it up, doing our omniscient stuff. We also have some more copies of stuff in our main deck, Drawn for Dreams, Ether Spout, and then a bunch of interactive stuff. Torbot's Crypt, Graph Diggers Cage for Graveyard Decks, Pithing Needle is a catch-all, and one of Ketra's Last Mercy to be able to put us back up to 20 life if we're about to die. And that is basically the plan of the deck. Mill ourselves, set up the Omniscient Flood of Tears combo, use Fae of Wishes to find win conditions from our sideboard, and parlay them into winning the game. As far as our mana base, we have Inventor's Fair and Mystic Sanctuary. Those are our sweetest line. We talk about Mystic Sanctuary, got one in our sideboard, can get back our Flood of Tears. Inventor's Fair can find one of our artifacts, then a bunch of mana fixing lands, and that is the ridiculousness, absurdity, of a deck built around Lens of Clarity for Pioneer. And that's about our It's a Deck Tag for today. So thank you again to Sanitarium for sending in just a ridiculously unique deck built around a card that I still can't wrap my head around Lens of Clarity being playable. And once again, if you'd like your own deck considered for a future Fishbowl Thursday, make sure to leave me that link in the comments or email me, Severdale of MTG Goldfish. Com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.